I will use this opportunity to reflect briefly on the Nairobi Declaration, which is the principal output of the successful Africa Climate Summit, which took place a fortnight ago, and its fresh perspective, which frames economic growth and climate action as simultaneous and complementary and not sequential and mutually exclusive strategies. Africa is a young continent with a median age of 19 and the home of the world's youngest and fastest growing workforce of highly skilled and immensely motivated men and women hungry for opportunity. Africa possesses abundant renewable energy potential. Africa holds two thirds of the world's remaining unutilized arable land. Africa owns 30% of the world's critical mineral reserves and Africa's natural assets from vast mangrove, pitlands, forests, form a significant proportion of the Earth's last remaining lungs and critical habitats for biodiversity. Africa's vast resources and our people's spirit of enterprise constitute a potential that can be activated through investment to unlock African prosperity and clean green global manufacturing. Our low emission profile is a singular advantage in that unlikely other regions, unlike other regions, Africa has no need to choose between satisfying new demand and decarbonizing existing capacity because our existing capacity is very low. We can leapfrog straight into a fully green industrial paradigm. Our commitment is categorical. We are ready, prepared, and eager to do our part in full in setting global production and consumption on an ecologically sustainable path. Yet, we cannot and must not do this on our own. The Nairobi Declaration defines concrete roles for the global community as partners in this transformation. Global collective action is urgently required to transform the institutional architecture of international financial systems and mobilize the necessary capital that will forge the golden key of investment. The declaration therefore proposes a pathway towards a global climate financing charter by 2025. 